You're listening to the 83rd edition of the Bitochen Podcast. And we're out here in the hills of Yehuda, of Judah, near Beit Shemesh. You see behind me a, uh, an ancient wall of a building. And you see the beautiful hills with trees in the background. And it reminds me, you know, we, we talk about Hashem as a tzur, as a rock. Because to, you know, there's nothing like rock to protect one from the elements, to protect one from whatever he needs protection from. And Hashem is that protection. Now I'd like to share with you the next two psukim, or few psukim, that, that is quoted here in Psukim Bitochen. And, you know, we have a classic pasuk, but it's preceded by another pasuk that perhaps you've never heard of or explored. So let's, let's take a look. The classic pasuk that we know is Bitchu Hashem Adayad. Trust in Hashem forever. Kibuka Hashem Tzurelam. For God fashioned the world with His name. So that's Yeshaya Per Chavav Pasuk Dalad. The 26th chapter of Isaiah, verse 4. But the previous Pasuk says, and you know, we're speaking about Hashem as the one who fashions the world. He's the one who gives shape, like a tsayar is someone who, who draws, someone who has the ability to paint. So Hashem is like the master artist. We speak about another aspect of tziur, which means to fashion or to form. Yetzer samuch, and we also refer to, you know, the thoughts of a person can be referred to as the yetzer hara, the yetzer toiv, the evil inclination, the good inclination. The thoughts of a person are also yetzer lev ha'adam, the thoughts of a person's heart. Yetzer samuch, so the same word. The same shorish, the same root, which is tsar, which means to, to, I would say, manifest or, or create or to think about in this context. The thoughts of someone who trusts, samuch means to depend. Titzar shalom, shalom ki So those thoughts fashion peace. When a person depends on Hashem, so those thoughts fashion peace, those bring about peace. Who has peace? The one who trusts on you, Hashem. And then the next passage is Bitchu Hashem and the Yad, trust on Hashem forever. Because with this name Hashem created all of the worlds. So let's see the explanation of these two verses. Yetzer. What does it mean, Yetzer? As we said, it's the, the concept of the action of thought, the effect, the thoughts that have active power, so to speak. Real thoughts that a person is planning something. That's the Masudah Stavid. The Maharikra explains, Yetzer, Shoyosemech ala Kodesh Baruch We say Yetzer Samuch, that the thoughts of a person are those that, thoughts that trust. So Yetzer Samuch, Shoyosemech ala Kodesh Baruch that he was trusting in Hashem. V'nishon alav b'chazka. And depending on, on, the, on Hashem, with Great power, with great strength. I don't allow myself to move an inch because of any fear or any difficulties that I'm, that I'm encountering. And it's possible to be in a place of bitachan, of faith in Hashem, of confidence in Hashem, that's so powerful that nothing can sway me. Titzor, this type of thought causes sheyesh shalom. This itself brings about peace, right? All of, we, we could think about it in different, different levels. The first level is that it brings about peace inside of myself, right? If I'm confident that Hashem is going to take care of me, Hashem is going to help me, He's going to save me, so I have inner peace, right? That's one aspect of it. But the, the faith, the confidence a person has in Hashem also brings about external peace, so this is actually Rashi. Rashi says, that's why, since I have inner peace, since I trust in you, that's why you should protect me. Right, that's the end of the Pazuk. The reason that peace should come about, the reason that I should have inner serenity, or that I should have external serenity, is because of the fact that I trusted in you, Hashem. Another explanation from the Marikra, this is what the Marikra says. What is it, when we speak about peace, 
What peace are we looking for? What's the real peace? What's the ultimate peace? It's the peace which is represented by Geula, by redemption, right? Because as long as the Jewish people are in exile, as long as the Jewish people have not all returned to the land of Israel, so there's a certain lack of peace. We're, we're wandering. We don't have that confidence. What's going to be? Are our enemies going to, heaven forbid, cause us damage? Are they going to hurt us in any way? Whether they be in Chutzlars, whether they be in the environs of Israel, we don't have that peace. But ultimately, if my thoughts are on peace, if my thoughts are on depending on Hashem, that creates peace. That's what creates peace. And it's trusting in Hashem that brings about the leaving goal. So I think about it. What are the reasons why a person is not willing, let's say, to move to Eretz Yisrael? And I know I've spoken about this and I'll continue to speak about this. Why does a person not want to go? Because well, there's all kinds of cheshbainas, there's all kinds of calculations. I don't know what it's going to be. What's going to be with my kids? What's going to be with my parnas? What's going to be with my livelihood? What's going to be with me? What's going to be with the family who I'm leaving behind, etc. Right? But ki batuach means that my thoughts, what's the foundation of my thoughts? The foundation of my thoughts, the foundation is Hashem is taking care of me. I'm samuch. i dependent on Hashem. If I'm dependent on Hashem, it doesn't really matter where I am. I could be in America, I could be in Europe, I could be in Eretz Yisrael, I could be in Australia, Japan, South Africa. Or I could be anywhere. But if my dependence is on Hashem, then that takes me out of goals. That takes away all of the excuses when it comes to returning to Eretz Yisrael. And the next passage, So we come out of this concept of the thoughts of a person, the, the creative thoughts of a person, focused on, depending on Hashem, create peace, right? Trust, and the next passage says, trust in Hashem forever, because Hashem is the one who created all of the world, right? It's Hashem's creative power. It's Hashem's creative thoughts, as it were, that brought the world into existence. So if I am using my creative thoughts, focusing them on HaKadosh Baruch on God, and on my dependence and reliance upon Him, so then I'm assured that everything's going to go well. Let's see the explanation here. Bitchu Hashem, the Metsudas David says, Once I have this kind of thought, once I have this ability to have confidence, and be talking in Hashem, so I'm going to encourage others. And those who have, those who have bitachin, they encourage each other. And they say, Bitchu Hashem, Adolam, trust in Hashem forever. Because God is the power. All the strength in this world and in the next world, it all comes from Him. Everything comes from God. So that's upon whom, that's who it is appropriate to rely upon Him. Next explanation based on the Malbim. So the response is, Ah, interesting. So the Malbim has a different understanding of what the previous Pasuk was talking about. He understands that people are looking for peace. They're, they're depending on thoughts of peace, on, on trying to create peace, and trying to depend on themselves. But the response to those who think that way, that it's going to come about, their peace, the peace is going to come out through thoughts of peace, and through uh, peace treaties, etc. Mishir Lehem Loyal Shalom Tiftuchu don't depend on peace. You could have peace, but peace is not necessarily permanent. It might be a treaty. It might be a, an agreement. But it could be fleeting. Only trust in Hashem. Because by doing so, so your bitachin will last forever. Believe have sake. Okay? So the bitachin in Hashem is a different quality of bitachin than the type of bitachin, according to the Malbim, which was referred to in the previous pasuk, in the previous verse, Trusting in peace. Kibika, return in What does this mean? For Hashem created the worlds with this name Ka. Return Lamar, Hadavar Shinifta Khalov, Tsarh Shayim Etzla Shinitanoi. Because the thing that a person trusts in needs to have two conditions. Aleph, number one, Hayakhailas, Shayukhulamalis, but Koshus of Itayah. The ability to fulfill the request of the one who trusts in him. Bayes. Ha You need to have that continuous ability. First of all, he has the ability constantly to fulfill the needs of that person who's asking. And second of all, he has the rats and the desire to do so. 
Because without these, so we can't have a proper bitachon, an absolute bitachon, an absolute, absolute confidence that the person who I'm having bitachon in, I'm trusting, is going to provide my needs. Says the Mabam that these two conditions can only be met by God Himself. Why? Because what does it mean, Kohashem? He explains the meaning, Shehu Hanitzchi, Shava Yosei Masmedes. The Kohashem means that God is always there. He's constantly giving reality to our existence. Right? His, but, but more specifically, His existence is forever. He's always there. He's always available. And Be'ez showed Sur Laman. He's the one, secondly, who fashions the world, who fashioned the world. He is the strength of all the worlds. All reality depends upon him. It's through Hashem that all of reality gets its strength and its continued existence. And therefore his power rules over everything. So don't trust in all the things that it seems on the surface are going to guarantee anything. Nothing can guarantee anything. The only one who has the ability to guarantee eternally is Hashem Himself. He's always there and He's always giving strength to reality. He's constantly able to, to do so. In other words, what we see, right, because the question was, who can you trust? You can trust someone who's always there and who always has the Ratzon, the Ratzon, the desire, right, from the fact that Hashem is constantly bringing reality into existence, from the fact that we experience continuous reality, this proves that Hashem has a ratzon, He has a desire, indeed, to give us reality. Why? Because everything that we see is coming from Him. So, we know that we can depend on Him because He's always there and He's always available. Okay, one more pasuk, also in Yeshaya, Perk Nun, Pasuk Yud. It says like this, Mi Hashem, Who amongst you fears Hashem, who listens to the voice of His servant, who went in the dark without light. Such a person can trust in the name of Hashem and depend upon, depend upon his God. Okay, so we have here three different concepts. One is from the Radak. The first one is from the Radak. What does it mean that the person who's called a Yirei Hashem, who fears God, who fears heaven, somebody who listens to the voice of his servant, the call on a VM. It's a reference to listening to the voice of his prophets, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, the five books of Moses, all, that, all the Torah that we have, which came down through the ages, originally from Moshe, the Nevi'im, their exhortation of the Jewish people to do what's right. Even if a challenge comes upon the person, Right? If we are trying our best, right? if we are trying our best, of course, as we said, a person can be B'teh Hashem even if he's a Russia. But ideally, ideally, we should be trying our best to do Hashem's will. If we're listening to Hashem's will, so even if a challenge comes to us, we can trust in Hashem, Hashem will save us. And I'm sorry, that was not the Radak, that was Rashi. Here's the Radak. Mi So the Pesach said, who amongst you fear Hashem? Even though Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet is saying that there were people amongst the Jewish people who said that Isaiah was not, you know, not the best, saying that he was evil. But someone who is a Yarei Hashem who truly fears God should listen to me. Even amongst those who have gone in darkness until now, so even though you haven't listened to me until now, there's still a chance to listen to me. We can always turn away from the negative paths that we've taken. We can take a positive path. We can turn back towards Hashem, which Pashtus is probably the understanding of even someone who's evil and goes and trusts in Hashem, meaning he turns away from his evil path. We could say that that's the explanation of it. Right? If we turn away from the evil path, so then it's going to be good. We can have confidence in Hashem, have faith in Hashem. 
Okay, next shot from the Mahari Kra. Mibachem Yerei Hashem, Zeh Tshuva. Right? This is the opportunity for repentance. She saw Meshivin Luma Sa'ilam. That the people of Israel say to the nations of the world, Mibachem Yerei Hashem, Shemei Bekol Avod Avanavim. Who amongst you fears God, listens to the voice of his servants, the prophets? Mibachem Shalach Hashem Begolos. And who amongst you that has gone in the darkness, meaning the Jewish people, who has gone in the darkness of exile, and doesn't see the light. Who else, speaking to the nations of the world, who is like us? The Jewish people in a certain sense are saying to the nations of the world, who received the punishment? You know, we've been in Gullus for 2,000 years, or more precisely 1,953 years. We've been in Gullus exile for a long time. Why were we sent there? Because of our sins, because of our affairs. But what did we do with that? Did we say, Hashem, it's unjust? Did we, did we complain about it? No. We accepted it upon ourselves that this is the will of Hashem. So, we have gone through the challenges of the, of the nations of the world who have mistreated us for thousands of years forced conversions, holocausts, pogroms, inquisitions. We've gone through the darkness, but we've continued to hold on to our faith in Hashem. And we depend upon Hashem. So Hashem is going to bring us out of this darkness, out of this ghost, out of this exile. So this is a statement. It's a, it's a mission statement of the Jewish people to a certain extent. Hashem, Who amongst you can claim of the nations of the world that you fear Hashem listen to, and you listen to the voice of His servants? Has gone and who else amongst you has gone through the darkness without the light but still continue to trust in Hashem? So it's an incredible statement of the Jewish people's resilience and power. What's our power? Our power is in our trust of Hashem. Finally, this last point here is the Yeshayan Belikov, is the Malbim, the MS, trusting Hashem truthfully. So this is the last point here of the Malbim, that through the Bitochen that I trust, that I have confidence in Hashem Yinsa, Mishan Mashem. So I can find that Hashem, I, I can rely upon Hashem. Hashem HaMashiach HaYisav, Yeh LeMishan Loi. And Hashem responds in kind. When I trust in Hashem, so that Hashem becomes someone upon whom I can trust. Hashem proves, indeed, that I can trust Him. So it's a very interesting thing, according to this Malbim, that and we know this part, we know this idea. Praises the one who trusts in Hashem, Hashem will, will be his trust. We find when it comes to tzedakah, we're allowed to, to test Hashem as it were. Right? Hashem promises that if we trust in him, he's gonna give us, he gives a guarantee that he's going to give us ultimate incredible blessings ultimately. So when it comes to be talking, it's the same concept. You can know that you can trust in Hashem and you have upon whom to rely. You know, you can know that you indeed, Hashem will come through. So it's an incredible thing here. I have a theme here. I think it's the theme of all three of these ideas, these three psukim, which is that we can depend upon Hashem to take us out of our national and personal challenges, the situations that we come across, if we find ourselves in these situations, we need, of course, the fashion of myself to think about what we've done wrong, turn away from the things that we've done wrong, focus on what we can do positively, and then focus our efforts on bitachon, on faith and confidence that Hashem will indeed bring us out of the situations that we find ourselves. Okay, that's what we have for today. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you again next time.